I'm Batman. And I'm Robin. Comic, Comic Book Syndicate, Syndicate Assemble. Assemble. Okay, guys, thank you for joining us. We're sitting here with uh, Jeremy Bastian and David Peterson, and we're here to review a classic Hellboy comic. This one's called The Wolves of St. August. And I know that when I pulled it out, you guys had commented that you didn't remember it being available in this format, right? It had been <laughs> printed in, as individual segments in Dark Horse Presents yes. back when Dark Horse did that, but it was all in black and white. And then after that came out, I wasn't able to catch all the Dark Horse Presents, so I was really looking forward when this came out as like a micro trade. Mm -hmm. um, but it was really hard to find as well. I spent a lot of years at Motor City Comic Con looking for that individual trade. Well, and it's funny too, because if I would have known how rare this was, I wouldn't have left it sitting on my, you know, the <laughs> front dash of my car, because when I came out, it was like convex. You know what I mean? Because the glue inside was just completely warped by the sun and the moisture. But anyway. Oh, I'll buy it off here. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'll, well, uh, let's talk about that later. But anyway, um, okay, so, okay, on to the comic. Um, now, my first thing, uh, going back, because with me, with Mike Mignola, I did like him, or sorry, Mignola is the proper pronunciation, right? Yep. Um, but the, the one thing I really like about him, and I try to, you know, get through studio people and they don't understand is I love the solid black inks mm -hmm. and the solid bright colors, which is really good out of fashion. And not to say that it's, you know, not to say that you have to do it that way, because, <laughs> no. I mean, no, 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 but I'm just saying that I really do appreciate about that. But, okay, now, what about for yourself? What is it about Hellboy and Mike, Mike Mignola that, you're, that you like so much? Um, it's a really fun concept. Uh, it's about this monster hunter or this uh, paranormal investigator. And then because he's a monster himself, he's kind of indestructible and can mm -hmm. uh, pretty much face anything. Um, and it just, it's a, a great vehicle for any kind of story Mike ever wanted to tell. He can tell a vampire story. He can tell a, uh, like a Frankenstein-y kind of a story. He can tell a haunted house story. He can tell mm -hmm. a, some kind of ghost story or, you know, whatever it is. He can just kind of shoehorn Hellboy into it. Well, now, what did you think of this particular one, The Wolves of St. August? Uh, it, was, it was great. It was right up there. It, was a, it came out at a point after the first... Um, the first series had run, but it was at that point where people didn't really know who Hellboy was. It was a, you'd go into your local comic mm -hmm. shop and you'd say Hellboy, and they didn't necessarily know what you're talking about. And so I, I felt like I was kind of in. I, I, I was on the inside. I knew about this comic that was really cool that other people didn't know about. So Wolves of St. August was still at that point where I was, I was in on the best secret in the comics mm -hmm. industry. You know, a little bit of X Files in there, a little bit of horror movies, you could say. And yeah, I just reread it today and actually do really enjoy it. I think my biggest thing that I like about it is the mood. Like the artwork, yeah. he just absolutely captures that that style, like horror film style, monster movies, you know, Kirby, whatever. Um, what about yourself, Jeremy? Um, with Mike Vignola, I love the mood, the atmosphere he can convey in just a couple panels. His panel layout in particular is. I think groundbreaking in mm -hmm. lots of respects. Um, I love the humor in it. Hellboy is hilarious. There's a line in here I particularly like. He's talking to the werewolf. He's like, you know, there's no more, and I can't remember the character's name, but there's no more of that. It's just the beast. And he says, I don't care if you're a goddamn fish, you're going down. That was a word for word. You had it right. Exactly. <laughs> if if I'm, my memory serves, Mike Mignola actually made an appearance in Michigan maybe 10 years ago. It was because he basically, Brian, if you could please stop doing that for the love of Jesus. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but um, he, uh, he basically said that he combined everything into this comic. He combined, he's like, I love monsters, I love Kirby, I love horror films. And he put it all together. And now, you're right, just like you said, he can yeah. do any story that he wants. And I think that's what any creator should do. And, and I'm imagining that's what you did with Most Guard. Yeah. Basically yeah. the same thing, right? Yeah, to some degree. I mean, I had samples of my workout and somebody said, hey, when's this going to be a book? So that was kind of the impetus. But it really is a lot of the favorite things I like drawing. I like animal stories. I like drawing uh, natural environments. I get to draw some architecture. Um, it's everything I want to do. Mm -hmm. Big big fan of pirates? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the thing, you know, and honestly, to anyone out there, that's what I recommend. I mean, look, look at this show. I mean, we could have done a show on anything. We could have done a show. Yeah, but no, we chose comic books. That's what we love, right? It just makes sense. Throw everything together, and then you'll always have fun doing it. So anyway, when we come back after this, we're going to talk about the decade that we just wrapped up. Well, about six months ago we wrapped it up. The zero, as we like to call it. The we're going to talk about some of the highlights and the lowlights. And we're going to have some extra help from our friend over here, Brian Kelly, right after this. Oh. 